Files is one of the most important apps on the iPad. After all, it is the file management system for the OS. When Files originally launched, calling it bare bones would have been generous. It lacks some really big features, but between some feature updates and some bug fixes, it's actually not bad now. In this video, I'm gonna cover the ins and outs of Files along with some tips and tricks that I know that I think everyone else should know as well. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, let's get into it. Unlike Finder on the Mac, the Files app is broken up into different parts. This changes depending on what cloud services and apps you might use. If you don't wanna use any cloud storage options at all, you can use the On My iPad section. This keeps everything local on your device and won't sync with a cloud service. At the top, you will see a new folder icon. No matter where you are in files, you can create a folder for that directory. Use this to organize your files. You can also hit Command Shift N on a hardware keyboard to create a new folder. And if you're using Stage Manager, you can hit Command N to create a new files window. Cloud services are a big part of files as well. Personally, I use iCloud. It's what works best for files. I also pay for extra iCloud storage as well because I do device backups, but more on that in a bit. iCloud is kind of structured weird. It was designed with the idea that apps should be containers of documents. And that idea has kind of fallen apart. I use a documents folder to organize everything in here. I also have a downloads folder and a desktop folder for temporary storage, just like what you would use a traditional desktop for. I completely ignore the app folders. With iCloud, you may see this cloud icon next to your files. This means the file isn't locally stored on your device. Tapping on this icon will download it. iCloud tries to be smart and keep files you use often locally on your device, while stuff you don't need gets offloaded. Third-party apps work with files as well. If you use services like Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, or other cloud providers, you can add them here. Select the menu option in files, then pick edit sidebar. From here, you can add third-party apps and rearrange the sidebar. Once added, you'll be able to browse these providers. Other apps like Photoshop or Lightroom that hook into files will be able to see these cloud services as well. Now it's not just third-party cloud providers that work with files, other apps work with it as well. Working Copy is a Git app I use from my website. Through its files access, I can see my website project folder. Really handy for adding an image or quickly editing something. I can combine this with the text editor RuneStone to open up a file, make a change, and then commit the change with working copy. If you have a network shared folder, you can access that from files as well. This could be a server, a NAS, or even something like a Mac mini with a shared folder. Select the menu button, then pick connect to server. You will need to enter the host name or local IP address for this device. Then enter the credentials for logging into it. I have here a 60 terabyte NAS. I can access this just like any other folder on my iPad, dragging and dropping files between what is locally on my iPad and my NAS or vice versa. I use this device to back up and archive all of my projects. External drives are also supported in files. Files can read APFS, HFS+, XFAT, FAT32, and plain old regular FAT. If you have a USB-C iPad, you can just plug a drive in. For Lightning iPads, you'll need to use a USB adapter, but they're extremely easy to come by. You can find them on Apple's website or Amazon or whatever. Now, there is this misconception that a, um, a certain other YouTube channel created, and I've been dealing with the fallout of that for years. They said it is not safe to use external drives with an iPad because there is no eject button. That is 100% wholeheartedly not true. The eject button has nothing to do with it. So when iPad OS got support for external drives, Apple wrote it so that you don't need to use that kind of legacy system for ejecting a drive, waiting a half hour, and then being able to pull it out. That, that system is so old and antiquated, it needed to go away. I just wouldn't unplug it while you're actively transferring files to it or from it. Now, it's not just external drives that work with files as well. Media cards work as well. So I use CF Express and SD cards. I have a CF Express and SD card reader I can just plug into the 
the side of my iPad. I can copy my video files over, photos, all of that stuff. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. I've told this story before, but it's really important. I worked in IT for almost nine years, and one day we set up this like fake coffee shop, open Wi-Fi network, everyone bring in their devices, because we were curious to see what we could do. Could we actually snoop on people's traffic? What could we see? It took some specialized hardware, but yes, we were able to do it. With Surfshark, your data is completely encrypted from the device to its destination, protecting your privacy. Now, this really isn't about a, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to lose kind of thing. Data is the new gold, and people will do scary stuff to kind of trick you into getting it. Now, one thing I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. Keeping logs defeats the purpose of using a VPN. Surfshark is great about that. With Surfshark, you can also change your location. So this is great for using streaming services. So uh, Netflix UK has a lot of stuff that's different from Netflix US. So I can make it look like I'm in the UK and I can check out that library. Or if I'm traveling abroad, I can tunnel back into the US using Surfshark and keep watching that show that's US only or only available on a streaming service that's in the US. I really like Surfshark. In fact, I like it so much, I pay for it myself. I'm gonna put some links in the description below to where you can go check out Surfshark. Use code LOLLY for an extra three months for free. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now, my biggest issue with files is actually the icon. I can't stand the icon. So what I did was create a shortcut. This is a really simple shortcut. All it does is open the files app. What you can do from here is add the shortcut to the home screen. And during this process, you could add a custom icon. I went ahead and got the finder app icon and added it to the shortcut and then added that shortcut to the home screen and then just added it to the dock. This way I have the finder icon in my dock and when I tap on that, it launches files. Files has a built-in search feature and I find it to be really good. You can search places like local storage, recents, and even iCloud. And it's not just the name of the files you can search for, but also file type, date, and tags. I use search not just in files, but also in Spotlight as well to quickly pull up documents. You can add any folder to the favorite section. This will give you quick access to them. I added obvious ones like downloads and documents, but also access to my video projects folder and my archive on my NAS. You can change the view of the folder. There is icon, list, and column view. Personally, I like column view. When you select an item, you will see the details of the file on the right-hand side. In icon view, you can click and drag to highlight a group of files. If you have a keyboard and mouse attached, you can command click to select multiple specific files at once. You can also click on a file and then shift click on another file to select a range. You can even go further and command click selected files to unselect them. In the same view menu, you can change the sorting options. This includes name, date created, modified, file type, size, and tag. You can also go into the view options and select the ability to group files as well. In here, there is also the ability to show file extensions. I find this incredibly useful. Right clicking or long pressing on a file will give you more options. This includes the ability to get info about the file, compress multiple files into a zip, copy, move, or share, open a file in a new window, and more. If you select an image and right click on it, you will get a quick action menu. This gives you the ability to rotate the image, turn it into a PDF, convert the image into a different format, or remove the background altogether. There is also quick action menus for PDFs as well. This gives you the ability to compress and optimize the file size. This is especially handy if you're going to be emailing the PDF and you have a file size attachment limit with your email, which most do. With a file selected, hit the enter key to rename it. Hitting the spacebar with a file selected will preview it. With images and PDFs, you can enter markup mode. Here you can use the pencil kit tools to draw, add shapes, and even add a signature to the file. This writes on top of the file, so it saves to the document. Tags can be a big part of files. You can use these to create different groups. By default, there are generic color tags. You can also go into the tag menu and create custom tags yourself. I tried using tagging as an organization system a little while back, but it just never clicked for me. 
For the way my brain works, a folder and search system is much better for me. You can use the tag menu to apply a tag to a file or group of files. A way tags can be incorporated into a system like my own is they can be used for adding more metadata. I could tag things with a project name, urgency, personal work, and then could search for those terms. There is a tag section on the sidebar so you can filter through your different tags pretty quickly. Under the menu button in files, you will see options for scanning a document. Files has a built-in scanner. When launching this, line up your document and the system will auto-crop the page. From here, you can add more pages or just save this scan to files. For me, iCloud is how I organize a majority of my stuff. This is where my documents folder lives and my defaults downloads folder. I store all of my files, photos, and everything else here. I created detailed subfolders in my documents folder so I have a place for everything to live. Just don't fall into the trap of creating too many folders. There really is a such thing as being too organized and you just end up with one file in one folder and it's just, it's too much. It'll just end up slowing you down. I keep my default downloads folder in iCloud. You can change where your downloads folder lives in settings, Safari, and downloads. This way, anything I download syncs between my devices. I really only use the on my iPad section for one thing, that's video projects. The file size and project folders can be huge and I don't want them syncing to a cloud service all the time. When it comes to file management on the iPad, there's more to know than just the files iCloud can handle the backup of your device as well. This happens when your iPad is locked and charging. This also backs up the on my iPad section, which is key for me because like I mentioned, that's where I store my video projects. Now this feature actually eats up a majority of my iCloud space and it's why I pay for the two terabyte option. I can get pretty close to filling up that two terabyte option if I have a lot of projects going on. So I'm kind of considering the four terabyte one now. But this system is one of my biggest issues with the iPad currently. I really want some kind of proper local iPad backup system to where I can back up to an external drive or my NAS or anything like that. Basically time machine, but for the iPad. My biggest issue is my iPad is rarely locked and plugged into a charger. Typically when I'm charging my iPad, it's when I'm sitting at my desk working at it and it's plugged into my monitor charging that way. And then, you know, when I'm working on iPad mode and stuff like that, I don't really plug it in and it's, usually never locked and closed long enough for it to back up to iCloud. So a lot of times I will get the notification that my iPad hasn't been backed up in two weeks, which is scary. So do you all have any tips for using files? Let me know in the comments below. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.